Mr. Reginald Robinson Lee, Lookout, was born in Bensington, Benson, Oxfordshire, England on the 19th of May 1870, later being baptized at the Church of St. Helen, Bensington on the 19th of June that same year. He was the eldest child of William Lee, 1848 to 1887, and his wife Jane Sarah Nay Jackson, 1849 to 1920, both school teachers and natives of London and Leicestershire respectively who had married in 1869. He had six surviving siblings, Agnes Beatrice, born in 1872, Herbert William, born in 1875, Irene Daisy, born in 1877, Leonie Rosamond, born in 1879, and Marion Evelyn, born in 1881. Reginald first appears on the 1871 census living at the schoolhouse in Bensington with his parents. The family later settled in Hampshire around 1875, initially in Whitchurch before moving soon after to South Sea where they were shown on the 1881 census living at the schoolhouse of St. Jude's School. His father passed away on 23 October 1887 and the remaining family appear on the 1891 census living at 43 Worthing Road, Port C. Reginald is described as a clerk in the Royal Navy and his mother is still working as a schoolmistress. She would remain for a time in Portsmouth before moving to London and living at 12 Leinster Square by the time of the 1911 census. She died in Surrey on 23 November 1920. Reginald was married in Portsea in 1897 to Emily Selina Hannah Hill, born in 1870, a native of Alverstoke, Hampshire, but they had no children. The 1911 census shows Reginald boarding at 26 Richmond Street, Southampton and he described himself as a stevedore. He had continued to work in the Royal Navy as assistant paymaster before he was retired in 1900. When he signed on to the Titanic in Southampton on 6 April 1912, Reginald Lee gave his address a 62 threefold lane, Southampton. He had transferred from the Olympic and as a lookout he received monthly wages of £5. On the night of the sinking, Lee and Frederick Fleet relieved lookout Simons and Jewel and took over for the 10pm to 12am shift, Lee taking up position on the starboard side as was his custom. Whilst Lee described the night as freezing, calm, very clear with a star-filled, moonless sky, he reported that a haze developed closer to the time of impact. At 11.40 pm the iceberg was spotted and Lee reported that three bells were struck by fleet, warning right ahead, and immediately he rung the telephone up to the bridge, iceberg right ahead. The reply came back from the bridge, thank you. Following the warning, Lee reported that the ship started to turn to port and he was certain that they would clear the berg. After the collision at 12 am Lee descended from the crow's nest and went to the seamen's quarters, presumably those on E-deck but identified in the inquiry as the seamen's mess which was on C-deck, and he reported water coming into the compartment through a tarpaulin, seemingly the cover of E-deck number 2 hatch, though identified as number 1 hatch in inquiry by examiner. He soon saw firemen and greasers coming up from their bow quarters carrying their kits, driven from their quarters by the rising water. Lee soon ascended to the boat deck after orders were given to get the lifeboats ready for lowering. He remained on the starboard side where he was assigned to lifeboat 11 but assisted in getting the forward boats cleared before moving aft. Several of the aft starboard boats were loaded from a deck promenade, as Lee reported. When he returned to the aft boats, his assigned boat, 11, was full so he moved to lifeboat 13. Finding scarcely anybody in it, he climbed in and assisted an officer, Moody, in loading the boat. Filled with what Lee estimated as 64 persons, predominantly third class, the lifeboat was lowered and he reported lifeboat 15 nearly landing on top of them after they reached the water. Lee was stood at the helm of the lifeboat as Titanic sank but said he did not see her final plunge although reported that he heard some underwater explosions. Lee subsequently testified before the Board of Trade Inquiry and was examined on 8 May 1912. He was questioned about the lack of binoculars in the crow's nest. Reginald later returned to Southampton and continued a career at sea. Ultimately serving aboard the Kenilworth Castle, he returned to living at the sailor's home in Southampton on 31 July 1913 but was unwell and breathing heavily. 
He endured without any complaint on his part but by the 5th of August his state had deteriorated and he was advised to see a doctor. He was found dead on the 6th of August 1913, lying face down and partially dressed. A post-mortem revealed that he had an enlarged heart and died of heart failure following pneumonia and pleurisy. He was aged 43 and was later buried in High Road Cemetery in Portsmouth. His widow Emily never remarried and spent her last days living at 242 Coombe Lane, Wimbledon, Surrey. She died on the 22nd of January 1921. Thank you for listening, and if you would like to hear more biographies, please leave a comment below and perhaps give a thumbs up and subscribe to help my channel. Thank you again for listening.